made from fermented fish. Yes, yes. Gelato, street food, uh, wine tasting. Welcome to Rome! Okay, we made it to the Naples train station. We used Rainbow Limo's transportation again to get from Positano to Naples, um, which cannot recommend enough. Even our driver was like, you do not need to drive these roads. Um, you need someone that knows how to drive in Italy and knows how to drive in the Amalfi area. So cannot recommend. The drivers we've had have been amazing. Yeah. Stories, the, the so personal. The customer service is great. Like uh, the person, uh, Ivana, that I dealt with, like was super responsive to email. So would highly recommend using them if you're trying to hire a private driver to take you down to the coast. Yeah. It, they were also sharing, like our driver when he was about to drop us off, was sharing tips about the train yeah, station. Yeah, because this that, is our first high-speed train that we're taking, so. Yeah, for example, like when you look at the big board, it, we're, we're going to Rome, but our train on the board says that it's going to Venice. Yeah. So you have to look for the train number and time, not necessarily your destination. And also, um, I bought our train tickets in advance online, but you can buy them here. It doesn't really matter. I think they're usually cheaper if you buy them a little bit in advance. Um, and then, I'm just trying to think what else. Um, the, I mean, mainly just the train number is the most important thing that you need. And you don't have to validate a train ticket, especially the high speed. I know some of the regional trains you might have to, but you don't have to worry about that with the high speed train. Yeah, and they will not post your your platform until about 10-ish minutes before. Yeah. So if, if we look right now, we don't know what platform we're gonna be on for our train, but once that gets post, we'll all mad dash to that platform to get ready to board and head to Rome. Welcome to Rome! We made it. We are at Piazzo Giuseppe Garibaldi. It was about a, I'm determined I didn't say that right, but it was about a 10 minute walk from our Airbnb in the Trastevere neighborhood. It's a great introduction to Rome. I'm not sure, the camera's probably not quite picking it up, but you can see the Roman Forum, Altar of the Fatherland, the Pantheon, we can kind of see the Vatican, not sure, but it's a great overview. Welcome to Rome, because we're literally looking at all the places we're gonna be visiting in the next couple of days. Cannot be more excited to be here. We just checked into our Airbnb. We're staying in the Trastevere, right? Yeah. Neighborhood, so. um, which I think means across the Tiber. Not positive on that, <laughs> but, um, we just got checked in, settled in, and started wandering around. Uh, popped into this little place to get a snack. I have a Aaron Sini. No, cro croquette. Croquette. Cro croquette. Cro the crochet. next, the next one is an Aracini. Aracini ca Cacio e Pepe. So we're gonna give these a shot. Um, pretty excited. Pretty hungry. So looking forward to giving this a try. Mm. Good. Mm-hmm. Mm. The Arancini Caccio e Pepe. I think I'm saying that right, but probably not. Mm. Mm-hmm. 
nice and and that is supposed to mean cheese and black pepper mm -hmm. specific cheese not sure what type of cheese but that is supposed to be a roman staple oh well when in rome <laughs> yes <laughs> please go on uh, do as as the romans do it's, it's an old expression <laughs> oh i've never heard of it we're so, excited to try the pasta version of it. Yeah, the real version. This is kind of the cheating, fast food, fried version. Um, so, yeah. So, we're um, on our way to a food tour in the Trastevere neighborhood, which is actually where we're staying. Um, so, we're on our way to meet uh, our guide and we'll get to do think gelato street food uh wine tasting and then also eating at uh, a really awesome um, uh restaurant i think In it's called de enzo yeah so. super excited to kick rome off with, uh, a, with a lot of food <laughs> and yes a lot of food. i'm hungry so far in Rome has been as Lauren and I are strolling or uh, I think the Italian word is passeggiata we'll be walking and Lauren will say oh look there and I'll say oh yeah what is that and she will say I don't know but it's pretty so we just uh, finished up our food tour and we headed back to the Airbnb and then ended up getting a nightcap at the bar like right below our Airbnb. Um, so I was just going to give a quick recap of uh, the Twilight Trastevere food tour that we did which was amazing. We had a great time. It was about three and a half hours. So the first place we went was called De Enzo 29 and it was this little hole-in-the-wall restaurant uh very local and just tiny little place they it was literally opened the place just for us yeah it doesn't open until i think seven and we got there at like 4 30 and um we sat outside and had uh antipasti which we had burrata melon and prosciutto and it was amazing yeah uh, it was a great way to kick off the tour and um then we had then we went to a little restaurant that has a wine cellar down below which i mean i can't even tell you what all our guide told you like or told us it used to be a synagogue and now it's a restaurant and you can go down to the wine cellar and actually in 1849 they discovered a statue of a wrestler and i can't remember the name but yeah. if it, it was a statue that is now on display at the Vatican. Yes, which we're excited because we haven't been to the Vatican yet. and It was the first 3D statue. Like most sculptures or statues were only from the front. And that's all they cared about is what you would see from the front. Whereas this was a full 360 view yes. of a human. And so now it's on display at the Vatican, which now we're excited because we were going to try to look out for that yeah. when we go. And then we went outside and had what well, is it was almost like a beef stew it was a pork shoulder stew but i that i'm not doing it justice when i say how amazing it was um it was so flavorful and it's a special recipe that i i i don't think i don't know if it was made with sardines it was uh, from fish or, yeah the and sauce was made from fermented Fish. Yes. Yes. Um, um, and sounds, she didn't tell us that till afterwards, which, which is probably a good thing. Yeah, which sounds awful, but it, it was, was so, so good. good. Jinx, buy me a coke. <laughs> <laughs>
we walked over to uh, this little cookie factory. And this, I think, was probably the highlight of this tour. So it's this little hole in the wall cookie factory. And this lady, she literally makes the cookies and it comes out on a cookie conveyor belt. She makes all different kinds. The craziest thing that blew my mind about this cookie place is she does not use butter in any of her cookies. I can't believe it's not butter. Or any animal, animal yeah, it's, product. Yeah, and it's a lot of them are gluten free. I don't know if all of them are, but it, but it, what it just blew my mind. We and bought it. We ended up buying a dozen of yes. just an assortment of cookies because I walked. <laughs> I wanted some of the ones we got to try. So yeah. I just, and I just kept pointing at a bunch and saying, two of those, two of those, two of those, two of those, and then I said, surprise me. And then one of the cookies that um, we got to try and we ended up getting more of was called, what was it called, Ugly But Good? Yes, I forget the Italian name of it. Yes, but, but it, it was, was... called Ugly But Good. Yes, it was very good. Um, so then after that, we went to what is best described as a butcher shop. That's pretty much what it was. And we walked in and we got porchetta. Porchetta. Which, porchetta. It's pork. It's pork, yeah. It was... I mean, it was phenomenal. And I think what was really cool about this place and the cookie place is it just seemed so local. Uh, it seemed unique. Um, and it was just, and I, like the, the people in there were just so nice and so accommodating. So we had a great time. So then we walked over uh, to a little place to get supply. I think I'm saying that yes. right. Yes, which is like street food. And all over around. Yes, and they're very popular. And it's like a fried, rice ball with like cheese risotto in the middle. with like a tomato Mozzarella pasta sauce and cheese yeah and they have a bunch of different kinds but Just that's what fried yes it is so good and then after that we went to a little restaurant called Casa Mia in Tra Trastevere um, to get pasta it have um, pork cheek in it yes uh, which <laughs> I mean it was so which good. I could could not get enough of yes um, so then after that, we went to get gelato, of course, because we had to cap off the whole night with gelato. At Fata Morgana, I, I'm probably am butchering that as well. Um, and they had, I don't know, so many flavors and so many unique flavors, which was yes. really cool. Um, so yes. I ended up getting tiramisu and strawberry. I kind of stu stood with just some normal flavors. I tried... I tried the wasabi chocolate. I was like, there's no way this is good. It's wasabi and chocolate. Um, I did try it, and there was definitely wasabi in that chocolate gelato. <laughs> Not for me. Maybe some people would enjoy yeah. it. But, but it was fun to try. It yeah. was definitely unique uh, and fun to try. I got Kentucky chocolate. And fun fact, was, if you don't know, I mean, I'm sure if you, uh, whether you have whether you know anything about us or not, Clint is originally from Kentucky. Yes, so. and it was uh, tobacco chocolate, <laughs> and it was really good, and coconut cream. It was a great combination. That pretty much concluded the tour, and I think it was about three and a half hours. And honestly, I found this tour. I found this tour through a Facebook group that I joined when I was like planning the trip, and it was one of. I mean, I think we'll look back on this day and night, and even the whole vacation, and think that. This was probably one of the highlights of our trip and I would highly recommend doing it as soon as you get here because it it just gives you like a few options if you're just not sure where to go or like you want to, and especially if you want to come back to those places, you have time. Especially if you're staying in Trastevere. Yeah. Um, it was a great introduction and yeah. overview of all the different food here in Trastevere and our tour guide was great. She actually was, as we would walk around, give us history of Trastevere. Um, after the tour, we wanted, we, st we didn't want to go in, we still wanted to hang out and take part in the Italian passeggiata, which means stroll. And I had heard that passeggi the passeggiata, which is the evening time that everybody just goes out, is the time to see and be seen. <laughs> and um, we, we hung out at this little bar below our Airbnb just to get a drink and 
people watch. We have been here to see all the puppy dogs. Rome is a very dog friendly city for sure. That's yes. what our guide was even telling us. And um, yeah, so so it's it's it feels a little bit like home. Yeah, just so, seeing all so the puppies. People watching is fine, but dog watching is much better. Yeah. So, so. but now we're gonna go back to our Airbnb and just hang out and get a good night's sleep because tomorrow we're doing the Coliseum, which I know that is one thing that I'm. Coliseum, Rome Forum, uh, Altar of the Fatherland, and maybe, I know we've been talking about dogs, but maybe there's a cat sanctuary in our future. Yes. So, so, looking forward to tomorrow, big day ahead.